All right, Shalom. I want to give all praises to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim Rakakwadash. I want to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all the Lord's whole four elect scattered abroad, teaching his word and sincerity and truth. Shalom. All right, this is Romans chapter 8, and I'm going to start at verse 22. It says, For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit. Even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. And um, the whole creation are the, are the Israelites <clears throat> of the Lord. And we do groan of, and travail of, and pain together until now, because we still in captivity. You know, these Edomites are still ruling the world. And we all know what Second Ezra 6 chapter says, that when Esau falls, Jacob is up next, all right, to rule. So even until now, we groan and we travail in pain, all right? And it says, verse 23, and not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the spirit, which will be the elect, because the elect is the first fruits. Okay. First spirit is created, you know, of Yahweh after Yahweh Shai was created. It says, even we ourselves growing with, within ourselves, waiting for the adoption. All right. Because that's part of the promise. That the Lord is uh, going to do. He's going to adopt us back. Because at one point. The Most High put us away. The scriptures say. We shall discontinue from our heritage. So the discontinue is to stop. And then to start back again. So it says to wit. The redemption of our body. You know our bodies will be changed. When Yahweh shall return. Those of the whole four elect. Will have new bodies. All right. We will be made perfect where the spirit and the body is one and not the spirit warring with the flesh. So verse 24, for we have, for we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope for what a man seeth. Why do he yet hope for? All right. Because hope, you know, is key hope, faith, you know, if you already know that you're going to be delivered, then why would you hope? You know, you wouldn't be sincere. So it says, for we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. And this is why two thirds can't get it. See, the Lord is a master uh, with his work, you know, in his work. You know, he allowed the elect to see and have faith in things that's not seen. And the in two thirds, they they can't believe because they need to see it. <laughs> it says, "For what a man seeth, why do he yet hope for?" You know, it says verse twenty five. But if we hope for that we see not, then do we have? Then do we with patience wait for it? So we're waiting. You know, we don't see. Um. We don't see salvation. Like as I could see, you know, my television in front of me. But we hope for the salvation to come. All right. And that is, you know, a key. You know, that's that splits the difference between the elect and the two thirds. This is why two thirds can't get it. All right. And it has only to, only to only by Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai in order for you to really have that understanding. Because then, you know, you might even wrestle with the scriptures trying to understand that point. You know, it says, but if we hope for that, we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Likewise, the spirit also help of our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groaning, which cannot be uttered it. You know, and that spirit can be Yahweh Shai. You know, could be the, the the angels that that uh records our prayers. Because 
It says, likewise, the spirit also help if our infirmities because brothers have infirmities, you know, brothers go through it in the flesh. You know, we are troubled on, on every side. It says, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. And that's true. We don't know exactly what we should be praying for, but we pray. You know, we pray for things that we think we need. Let me, um, I wanted to go into the commentary. I mean, the summary of that verse when I read here, uh, the NLT, it says the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For an example, we don't know what God want us to pray for, but the Holy Spirit prays for us with groaning that cannot be expressed, expressed in words. All right. Now that's understanding there, man, because, you know, some things you may not be able to utter. You don't know that you should utter, but, the, but the spirit, okay the spirit okay that that's really the uh the uh intercession the one that helps all right knows how to express what you are what you're feeling or what you're going through you know to the most high in a way that the lord will you know understand all right the most high understands man he, he created us it says for an example we don't know what god wants us to pray for but the Holy Spirit prays for us with groaning that cannot be expressed in words. Now, the NIV, it says in the same way, the spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we are to pray for, but the spirit itself intercedes for us through word, through wordless groans. Mm. <clears throat> All right. Now, this is verse 27. It says. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth that is is the mind of the spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of the Most High. Now the saints are the Israelites. That's a key giveaway. So the Lord is only dealing talking with the Israelites, which are his chosen, and in particular the elect. It says, and he that searcheth the hearts knoweth that what is the mind of the spirit, because he maketh intercession. For the saints, according to the will of the Most High. Now, this is intercession. I'll skip some. No. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is in the mind of the spirits, the spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of the Most High. All right, verse 28. And he know that all things work together for good to them that love the Most High, to them who are called according to his purpose. So you see, the Lord has a purpose. And that uh, makes me want to get this scripture here. So lock your bed with me. This is, um, you know, not scripted. So I'm reading scriptures which are scripted, but you know, this is just just cut the cut the phone on. I was meditating and I just started recording. Um. Oh. So bear with me. Let's get it together. Ecclesiastes, chapter three, verse one. To everything there is a season. And a time to every purpose under the heaven. You see? A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up, a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, a time to refrain from embracing. Now I'm going to jump down. Verse 8, it says, a time to love, a time to hate. Let me read that again. A time to love, a time to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace. Now, who does these things? Who orders the season and the purpose? The Most High. And that's what we're reading. I'm reading that. To everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. So all of these 
verses from 1 to 8, it's explaining to you the time and season and the purpose, all right, for that particular thing to happen, to occur, to be born, to die, to plant, to put, pick up, to be killed, to, to heal, to break down, to love, to hate, time of war, all right? So let me go back. Romans 8 and uh, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love Yahweh, to them who are called according to his purpose. All right. To his purpose, because the heavenly father is not dealing with every nation on the planet. He's dealing. He's not even dealing with all of Israel. He's dealing with the elected of his Israelites. All right. But he is dealing with Israel. Because he will, you know, adopt us back. You know, it says, verse 29, for whom he did foreknew, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So the Lord designed certain men in the image of his son. All right. You know, to man it themselves the way that his son did. And we all know that the heavenly father is well beloved of his son. You know, matter of fact, the Lord said that when John the Baptist was going to baptize him, or I, I believe he, when he did, you know, they, they had the, the hollow, everyone that was there, they saw the hollow um, sp the spirit over his, Yahweh Shah's head. And it's, the Lord said, this is my well-beloved son, you know. So it says, for whom he did foreknew, meaning the Lord already knew us before we were here. He also did predestinate. To be conformed to the image of his son. Now the word predestinate. Let's see. What the blue letter says. <clears throat> predestinate. To predetermine. Decide beforehand. So the Lord decided beforehand. Alright. His men. Of who he chosen. This is why you can't make up anything about the Bible. You know. You either got the truth or you don't. You can't add or you can't take away. Because the Lord already predetermined what was the destiny of Babylon the Great. What would be Babylon the Great? Okay. Who would he deliver out of Babylon the Great and even over the rest of the world and out of all these other countries? You see? Because he predetermined this from the very beginning. The scriptures say he spoke the end from the very beginning. It says decide beforehand. It says uh, to foreordain a point beforehand, which he's talking about his elect, right? Determine before. Mm. All right, so let's go back. Let's read that again. It says for whom he did foreknew. You know, I must get, um, let's go to Jeremiah. Got to go there. Is that Jeremiah 1 and 5? Let me say 4. Mm, right, this is Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4. Then the word of the Lord, Yahweh, came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and I ordained thee to be a prophet unto the nation. So the prophets were, were predestinated. Okay. They were ordained from the spirit world. So when they were placed inside, okay, they were placed inside a woman's womb from a man's loins. The most high knew that man was going to be a prophet. When he got to a certain age, because the Lord already for, for, for beforehand chosen him to do so. So this is why you would never win, Esau. Pay attention. You would never defeat Yahweh Bashem Shai because he's a hundred steps ahead of you. I'm going to say a million, a billion steps ahead of you. You're just playing out in what you're supposed to play out. And that's your lot of being a damn devil. OK, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and I ordained thee a prophet 
unto the nation. And that's why the scriptures say the prophets are subject to the prophets. Because the Lord always, he been created the prophets from the very beginning. The Lord ain't got to, the Lord can do what he do. But the Lord already created the spirits and what they do. You know, if the Most High want to create new spirits, he can. But the Lord already created the spirits. All right. So the prophets are subject to the prophets, man. Who the prophets were here, we're reading about Jeremiah, is back here today. And if he is not here, he came and left again, and he's in the spirit room. But either way, the prophets are back. All right, so let's go back to um, Romans chapter 8 and 29 again. For whom he did foreknew, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren, which is Yahweh Shai, our Savior, man. It says, verse 30, moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. Okay, that speaks for itself. <clears throat> the elect is justified. To see salvation, regardless of what sin they did, they done. All right, and that that's also showing um, <laughs> respect of persons, you know, because the scripture says the Lord is not a respect of persons, but is the Lord a respect of person? I'll let you figure it out. Anyway, it says, um, verse thirty one. Uh, what shall we then say to these things? If Yahweh be for us, who can be against us? Exactly. So this is why we have no need to fear Esau, fearing these other nations, fearing what man can do. Because if the most high be for us, who can be against us? And understanding that is that if we do have to get put to death, that was the, the lot of the Lord. Who can be against us? That was the lot the Lord wanted you to go through so that he can glorify you when he when he uh when, when you come back. Matter of fact, when the Lord resurrect you. Okay, not reincarnation, but resurrect. You know, when you come right back, you're going to be glorified. So it says, what shall we then say to these things? If Yahweh be for us, who can be against us? You're not stopping the Israelites from running this world, from ruling this world. You're not going to stop prophecy. <laughs> you know, hate, uh, the haters, the scoffers. You're not going to make a man of the Lord lose the love of the Lord, you know, and and as if the most high is not going to, um, you know, fulfill prophecy as is written. You can't stop prophecy. So this is Romans 8 and 32. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? You know, so. Yahweh Shai wasn't spared, and Yahweh Shai had a great, grievous uh, uh, judgment, uh, I should say, well, sacrifice, you know, on that cross, something that all us brothers probably couldn't bear, but Yahweh Shai could bear it, and he did, and he was that ultimate sacrifice to bring the deliverance back unto Israel, to bring redemption, you know, see, that's why you can't stop prophecy because Yahweh Shai did the ultimate sacrifice. It's over. It's complete. When Yahweh Shai when Yahweh Shai went on the cross and spilled his blood for the for the Israelites, in particular the elect, it was complete. It's done. <laughs> it was done. Everything else is just gonna play out. It just gotta, you know how they say, let the meat thaw out. But you know how like uh, you got frozen steak or something, and you gotta put it in a little, uh, take it out the freezer, and you put it in your sink. And you probably go about your business throughout the day. You know, you come back, you might check and be like, oh, shit, this shit's still frozen. You're like, fuck, I'm give it a little more time. Because why? It's going to fall out, you know, they say. You know, it's going to eventually, not, it's going to be defrost. Well, that's what, that's after Yahweh Shai completed this mission. Everything else is complete. It's done. We're just waiting for the rest of it, the prophecies, to, to basically uh, come through. In this season, we read Ecclesiastes 3 and 1. We're waiting for that purpose, you know, in the time and season. That's it. You know, so we really don't have, we don't have nothing to worry about, man. You know, we just got to keep praying and continue to endure and, and pray until Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. 
All right, so it says, He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Right. It says, Who shall lay anything to the charge of the Most High's elect? It is the Most High that justify. Hmm. Who is he that condemneth? It is, it is Hamashiach, Yahawashai, that died. Yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of Yahweh? Who also maketh intercession for us? All right, so that intercession is Yahweh Shai. <clears throat> Yahweh Shai is, is like our lawyer. All right, he's like our lawyer, man. So I can separate the elect from the Lord because why? They were predestinated beforehand. And this is just playing out the lot of the Lord, man. You know, so you can't separate the love of the Lord. And this is why Esau, let me go into this, why they want to fulfill this in uh, Wisdom of Solomon. Huh. Wisdom of Solomon too. And uh, Right. So this is this is why Esau and his mindset is, uh, you know, he's a devil. You know, he hated Esau. He's been hating Jacob for the longest Esau. And most high going to pay you a visit. Um, let's start here. Wisdom of Solomon. All right. So lock you. Um, this is a uh, I had to edit this part. I mean, I had to edit the whole video because my video got messed up uh, due to the memory in my phone. And it got distorted. I had to repair it. So the audio is working well. But the visual part, when I, you know, was watching the, the blue letter, me going into it, the Bible, and you can see it, it's all distorted. So I'm going to have to edit this video in a way when I get back home. And um, I was going into Wisdom of Solomon, in the second chapter. And, you know, this is the mindset of Esau and how they want to prove if the men of the Lord are the elect of the Lord, you know, because uh, Esau, uh, Esau is a wicked man, all right, and um, I'm just going to get into it, Lord willing, this lesson to be edifying, I'm redoing it again, and what I was speaking, so hopefully the Lord allowed his spirit to uh, bring itself back out to, to edify, Lord willing, it says, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2 and 14, it says, he was made to reprove our thoughts, that's right, uh, the elect that were predestinated the first fruits of the spirit, okay, under Yahweh Shai, was made to reprove Esau's thoughts in this particular time, in this, this season. All right, this is why everything is playing out. So it says, He was made to reprove our thoughts. He is grievous unto us, even to behold, for his life is not like other men's. His ways are of another fashion, and that's true, okay. Which I believe the precept is I was looking for before was uh, his portion is not like them. Uh, uh, the elect, you know, the elect is um, the elect of Israel, you know, who the Lord have chosen, who he pre predestinated for new beforehand. All right. They are not of the fashion of the rest of Israel. They are made of another fashion and they're not of the fashion of Esau. Okay. So it says he is grievous even unto us to behold for his life is not like other men's and why is that that's because of the scriptures you know the look the lord did this with these men you know to what to keep a certain mannerism about themselves man in this god forsaken as world okay it says um his ways are of another fashion and our fashion is really our custom our hebrew custom you know uh being hebrew israelites which the way the lord taught us it says, uh, verse 16, we are esteemed of him as counterfeits. He abstaineth from our ways as, for, as from filthiness. He pronounces the end of the just to be blessed and make of his boast that the most high is his father. And that's true. We do esteem Esau as counterfeits because he is not God's chosen people. He lied. Okay. He took in a covenant that wasn't none of his. He raped, robbed, and stole the identity of 
of, of the Lord's chosen people, which are the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native and Seminole Indians, the real Hebrew Israelites, not black Hebrew Israelites, but Hebrew Israelites, just like he's a Hebrew Edomite. But he keeps his customs as the wicked because that's what son he is. He's the sons of the wicked as the most high appointed him to be. You see, so it says, uh, we esteem of him as counterfeits. He abstained from our ways as filthiness. You right, you damn right. Okay. Esau, his filthy, his ways are filthiness. You know, he carries this ideology of how this old ancient customs was back in Greeks, back in Greece, being the Greeks. Okay. And in the Romans, he has Greek mythology. All right. He, 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 uh, practice the act of homosexuality he does it as a norm bestiality bestiality you know being a pedophile these are his customs this is why there's laws passed today that it's okay for same-sex marriage so yeah we 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 abstain him from his ways as from filthiness it's disgusting man that's not the way of the lord he pronounces his end to be to he pronounces his end of the just to be the blessed and maketh his boast that the most high is his father. And we do that. That's right. Because the most high have blew his breath upon the dry bones that they may stand upon their feet, which means they have that understanding. And we now understand that the heavenly father, the creator, okay, is our father. Okay. Not Esau, not your slave master. He's not your father. The Heavenly Father is, man. And we do boast. We say that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is for the Israelites. All right? So he's saying he pronounces the end of the just to be blessed. And we do. Because we say that what? The, the, the elect is going to be delivered. And make of his boast that the Most High is his Father. Let us see if his words be true. And let us prove what shall happen in the end of him. So their mindset is they want to prove to see if we the elect. All right, by doing what? You know, they said, let us let let let's see if his words be true, and let us prove what shall happen in the end of him. So they so they're willing. So basically, they're provoking the Lord. They 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 want to see they want to see the Lord's power. They want to see if the Lord is really going to come deliver us through His ships which the world call UFOs, right? So it says, verse 18, for if the just man be the son of the most high, he will help him and deliver him from the hand of his enemies. So they're basically uh, provoking the Lord, man. You know, it's kind of sort of like, like, um, like you got a bully, right? And there's two other guys, he's bullying, you know, one guy. And what he does is, he wants the guy to fight him, so he starts to pick with his friend. You know, that's probably a punk, probably nobody, in, you know, in the fighting ability. And he pick on him, and he say, yo, man, look, what you gonna do now? I'll beat him up and punch him in the face. All to what? Provoke the man that he wants, he wants to fight. You know, he wants him to do something. That's like, that's Esau, man. He's doing that. He's picking on us because he wants to see the most high do something. And that'll be the last thing you will want to see. But guess what? He's a devil that the Bible speaks of, man. This is his mindset. These are the elites mindset, man. We have it all written here in the scriptures. The Lord said, before these things spring up, I tell you of them. So we have 100% truth. All right. So it says, let us see if his words be true and let us prove what shall happen in the end of him. For if the just man be the son of the most high, he will help him and deliver him from the hand of his enemies. Let us examine him with despitefulness and torture that we may know his meekness and prove his patience. So Esau want to see us. He want to see if we're going to remain humble. Okay. He want to see if we're going to remain, you know, uh, 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 our, our love for the Lord and our sufferings through our patience. All right, because he's provoking the Lord. Now, this also is uh, 
going back into um like I went into Romans the eighth chapter, you know who shall separate the love of uh, our love from the Lord? Shall distress, persecution, famine, nakedness? All right. It says, um, let us examine him with despitefulness and torture, that we may know his meekness and prove his patience. So they're looking to torture brothers and kill brothers, man, all to see what the Lord is going to do, right? Let us condemn him with a shameful death For by his own sayings he shall be respected You know Because they want to They want to uh, <laughs> They're basically taunting man Saying you know Let's see if you're going to be glorified Well let, let us destroy you Let's see if we can destroy you You know Anyway It says um, Such things they did imagine And were deceived For their own wickedness have blinded them As for the mysteries of Yahweh They knew them not Neither hope they for the wages of righteousness Nor discern a reward for the blameless souls And that's why, brothers, those men of the whole four elect Brothers out there teaching We got to remain blameless in the eyes of the Lord You know, we're not going out there in army fatigues And bulletproof vests and going to shooting ranges For what? Esau is going to um, truly have to lie on brothers, man You know, and the Lord knows it because why? The, the elect is blameless, man In the eyes of the Lord That's why they're being saved Being delivered Because <laughs> Esau, what he's going to do is blatantly lie Alright So it says um, For as for the mysteries of Yahweh They knew them not Neither hoped they for the wages of righteousness Nor discern a reward for the blameless souls For the most high created man to be immortal And made him to be an image of his own eternity Nevertheless, through the envy of the devil came death unto the world, and they that do hold on his side do find it. All right. So, Lord willing, I know um, I was kind of, you know, you know, my my original lesson. I'm kind of, kind of was drawn away from the points I wanted to make, and me second second time doing this video over, as far as this point, you know, and trying to strive to make the points that I made before, you know, the spirit. It's not, uh, uh, you know, allowing me to. So I hope you guys were edified. Um, I didn't want to scratch the video and do it all over because I felt as though, you know, there was some points in there that was made, you know, and uh, Lord willing, may this lesson be edifying to those of the whole for elect, man. You know, so with that, I want to give all praise to Yahweh, Baha Shem Yahweh Shai, Baha Shem Rakakwadash. I want to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all the Lord's hopeful elect, Shalom.